Oh, hey, hi, people. I'm back. Um, wow, I've been just trying to rest this weekend. I had a wonderful Shabbat. Um, it was a program on El Shaddai Ministries had a program on. A lady from Africa was telling them how to worship, telling them what how important it is to worship. And uh, it was absolutely amazing. I was really uh, enjoyed it, uh, rested, and I've uh, been taking my echinacea too because like something's in the air, you know, all these things going in the air, flu, whatever. And so I've been taking that and drinking my pineapple juice and my vitamin C and taking my stuff because I don't want to get anything, don't want to catch anything, people. So I hope you guys are taking care of yourself out there as well, taking things. And uh, please, if you can avoid the flu shot, I would, okay, but I'm not telling you what to do, I'm just telling you I wouldn't, if it was me, I haven't had a shot since high school, so I don't get involved with those very much, because my mother also get very sick, and all the people I know in my family got very sick, so I do not take the flu shot, so, um, I take stuff natural, not natural herbs and things of that nature, but I'm going to be here today to talk about... <clears throat> A lot of things. I uh, got a lot of things to show you. Um, I'm sure yesterday I was going to try to do a video yesterday. It didn't work out, so I uh, couldn't do it yesterday. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to be talking about some news clippings going on uh, and some other news things going on. This I thought was just everything's kicking up. Everything's kicking up. What can I say? Um, and I just heard on the news about... Uh, I will, this basketball player just died in a helicopter crash and saw that this morning and I'm telling you it's just one thing after another but we got to keep ready and be ready so you have the declaimer on the screen and I was just looking at this today America's moral foundation we have just gotten away from the moral foundation the Ten Commandments we have gotten away from God's principles God's uh, plan God's plan God's uh, program his creation, his uh, blueprint. Like I said, when you go to take your car in to get it fixed, what happened? They give you a manual. We have gotten away from God's manual. So this is why we're going through all these things today, people. That's why all these things are happening. We are at the end, in the end, at the end. And so uh, if people would just look at these a while and you know, focus on these. But see, we have gotten away from this. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make into thee any graven image. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And today is Sunday, the first day of the week, not the Sabbath. The Sabbath is the seventh day of the week. On Saturday, the first uh, Saturday, sunset Friday, the Saturday sunset. Okay, so we we don't even look at that because the, the Pope of Rome and Constantine changed it. Uh, so, you know, we don't do that either. A lot of us in the Sunday churches, all these Catholicism uh, holots. And so it's time to really follow your the Father, Yeshua, HaMashiach. And somebody wrote me a note the other day on, a, I think, a Facebook channel. And they had said to me, uh, Monterey said, do not judge people according to the Sabbath day and the holy days and the uh, feast days. Or, you know, that, that scripture would say, don't judge nobody according to the blue moon and the, the moons and the Sabbath days. And, and you know who that's talking to? It's talking to God's Israelites, okay? It's talking to God's people that keep the commandments. It's not talking to people who don't keep the commandments. He's telling us don't let nobody judge us when we keep the commandments, when we keep the holy days. It's not talking to you who don't do it, okay? So you got to understand what the Bible is saying when it speaks, people. So I, I, I got to go and answer that person back. But really, it's not talking about uh, we don't need to keep it. It's not talking about that at all. So anyway, honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shall not kill. Thou shall not commit adultery. Thou shall not steal. And stealing is going on left and right, small, big. I, I, I see it in the body of Christ all over the place. Stealing from the people. Stealing from the people that's trying to help you out. Stealing from uh, uh, your, your Christian friends. Uh, just stealing. This thing, stealing is just really escalating. Stealing people mail. You know, I, I had an incident here, not in a family member. Had to just move, relocate because somebody was stealing the mail. Stealing stuff out of her apartment. Just stealing. People just need to stop stealing. Stop stealing. 
Thou shall not steal. Thou shall not bear false witness. Thou shall not covet. And so we covet. We always jealous of our neighbor's wife. All these things. This is America's moral foundation and we have gone away from it. I'm going to be having uh, Benjamin Fairclough uh, speak a little of his sermon that he just did today. I'm going to just play probably 10 minutes of it. Uh, I'm going to get over to Dave Hodges. Uh, just going to be playing some things here today you guys need to hear. Uh, Ladder Rain 333 got a message. I don't think I'm going to get around to it, but I will put some other additional things in the description box. So uh, let me go ahead and get this done because time is gone already. I want to play this song. I talked to this lady here on a chat the other day. Ellie Hannah. Ellie Hannah. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Eli Hannah. I'm going to be playing her song, one of her songs right now to, in to intro my, uh, start out my video with. I just needed to hear some uplifting music every day. I'd be trying to play music every day. Got to get into this praise with Yeshua. We got to start praising him more and more and more, people. Praising him more and more and more. And also, prayer and fasting. That's what we need to be doing right now. Getting closer and closer to him. Because things going to be escalating, escalating, escalating. So let me go ahead and mute this out and play this song. And then I will get into the other videos I'm going to show you. I'm probably just going to go straight into them. Okay, so... Uh, let me see, is there anything else I wanted to show you before I get into it? You guys heard about that. I just said Kobe Bryant reportedly killed in a uh, California helicopter crash. I was just looking at it here with um, Apostle D. Apostolic. He just put it out too. It's not a, He's not talking on here. He's just showing his picture as well. So I, I, I just need that you need to pray for his families. Uh, I know he's been going through some things himself uh, prior. Uh, just pray for his families, okay? It's just uh, one thing after another uh, is in front of us. But I'm going to go here and um, hear some other news. But before I get into the news, let's go back to the song and uh, play it here if I ain't lost it here now. <laughs> okay, let's just play this song here real quick. Okay, all right. Let me go ahead and uh, mute that out. <clears throat>
DAPU 7. We have reports now out of China that residents from all over are turning on the government in different ways here as this coronavirus has apparently spread to a region affecting more than 50 million people. The last I seen it was around 56, I think, and then that number disappeared with the headline to update stating that now they have declared a state of emergency. So they say right here, because this did say something different. I refreshed it. Now it's saying that they're saying a grave coronavirus is accelerating as Hong Kong declares a state of emergency. So we're talking 1,500 cases worldwide, 42 deaths. We've broken this whole thing down into detail many times. Those of you that follow me, if you've missed it, I've got other videos talking about patents, talking about different aspects of this, and plenty of live streams on DLive where I cover a lot of different avenues connected to this. But this is just uh, some of the latest here as they declare the state of emergency. Wanted to let it be known that that's what's going on, and they are seeing revolts here by the people. It says right here, Chinese people are turning on the government as this spirals into the Lunar New Year. And There's a whole report here on Business Insider talking about that here. So I'll leave links below. I'll continue to update with information as things are breaking. Follow me on Twitter for breaking news. Follow me on DLive for exclusive live streams you're only going to find over there where the gloves come off. Can I first of all thank I have to say something here, people. Um, wow. Uh, I just, I, I'm telling you, the prophecies are speeding up, people. This man has never been to, never been to this trip, never had this trip before. It's all in Revelation 13. I'm telling you, the, the, the Prince Charles and Prince William and all of them, the royal families, I told you guys to watch, to watch. Harry's out of the picture pretty much. And now they're having all these things go on. I don't want to hear his voice, okay? Every time I hear this man's voice, I have to anoint myself. I'm serious. That's why I, I don't want to hear his voice. I don't want to hear the Pope's voice. I was hoping that they would have had some, um, you know, some, some words on the screen. Sometimes they have words on the screen. They're not having them on the screen here. But I do not want to hear his voice. I'm telling you, it's so full of demons. I hate to say that, but... I'm telling you, if you really a spiritual discerning person, you will know what I'm talking about. But I cannot, I cannot hear his voice. Years ago, back in 2000, uh, 2000, uh, I can't even remember, year 2000, I think it was 2011, uh, 12, I can't remember. Uh, I looked at one of his websites from Europe, from Europe, the UK. He was reading the Bible and and the father told me and i feel all the demonic spirits going on through this man i you know i'm telling you 
these people are antichrist and no, you know you guys don't want to believe me but i'm telling you after a while you'll see some great things coming out of the royal families coming out of europe come as i know uh, quite a few people uh, uh my african brother uh jonathan who i talked to he believes that he's going to be the antichrist uh, uh we have apostolic d he believes it Prince William, and I have another friend of mine who's been looking at this for stuff for many, many years. I think Jan Michael, she believes the Antichrist coming out of Europe. God, these people are secret Muslims. I can't tell you guys more. I'm telling you, Prince William Islamic centers are all over the world. They've been planning this thing for many, many years. Now, that's me. I'm just telling you what I, what I believe. And so I know people saying Obama, saying everybody is saying this and saying that. But I'm telling you what I know from, I'm just telling you, watch these people. Watch the royal families, okay? Watch Israel, people. Now he's breaking into Israel. He's saying it breaks his heart to see Palestinian suffering. Come on, people. This man is a, a, a this man is a, a eugenist. E-U-G-E-N-I-C. Go look it up. Eugenists want to depopulate. Africa is going through all kind of horrible things. Let me go on there now. Let me put my thing back on. But I can't hear his voice. I'm sorry. I will put the links in the description box if you want to play him. But Just here. Um, I, as you know, you're watching the Common Sense Show, and we are the show that is freeing America one enslaved mind at a time. And I'll tell you, this is really where we earn our billing on stories like this. Uh, first of all, let me mention that we're brought to you by Patriot Flashlight. This has to be part of every prepper's situation. And if you're ordered to hunker down, that's going to be the topic of what we're going to talk about today is the martial law recommendations made by FEMA Acting Director uh, Gaynor to President Trump. And I was lucky enough to come across some things, and there's some things I can tell you. There's other things that are classified, because I don't want the knock on the door. I'm not going to reveal. But I think you're going to get a pretty fair idea of what it is they're recommending and how bad things are going to get if these recommendations are acted upon. And that means you're in survival mode. You're hunker down mode. That's why you need light. This is solar powered. Don't have to depend on batteries. I recommend, I have three of them, and I recommend that you have at least two. Three is even better. They're low priced. Uh, they're, they're easily affordable. You take 15% off, but this thing shines for miles. Uh, you never have to worry about finding batteries in the middle of the night. You just have your flashlight there and you're good to go. And this can charge your electronic devices and do a whole bunch of other really cool stuff that's listed on the site at patriotflashlight.com. The link is also in the description box following this broadcast. Well, as you can tell, and I'm going to go here to a different screen temporarily here is I'm going to talk about the martial law recommendations that have been made to the president. I was allowed to rewrite them um, in my own words, and I was told certain things were uh, out of bounds. Okay, so I always respect that. Listen, I get good sources because I never burn sources, and I never go past the point which people tell me they'd like me to go. And you say, well, gee, what about the story? Well, how about uh, integrity? And eventually all things come out anyway, and that's what I've discovered. Um, all right, here we go. There are nine provisions of the martial law. Uh, actually, there were 27, and I'm allowed to summarize it into nine, and I had to leave 18 things out. Um, nobody can travel outside their home, even in a medical emergency. Yeah, I mean, you're going to be a shut-in, and this will be strictly enforced with extreme prejudice, and that's all I can say on that point. Suspension of all public gatherings of any type, no school, no church, no nothing. Number three, enact geographic quarantines for cities until the crisis is over. Well, I can tell you from epidemiology point of view, and a recent study that was done at Perbright, funded in part by Bill Gates, that's 18 months. So the crisis could last 18 months. This means troops will isolate every single metropolitan area, and they'll have uh, concentric zones. And I'll get into that here in a little bit more. Um Number four, to try and lessen the inevitable food riots, FEMA in hazmat suits will go house to house in nicer neighborhoods, and they will uh, feel that the likelihood for food storage is there, and they're going to take what they feel they need. 
and they're going to redistribute it. I think it's a fool's errand, but this is actually a plan on the books. Uh, by the way, I had an ex-basketball player a decade longer ago call me on the phone and says, Coach, what's FEMA? He says, I know you have a radio show and do all this stuff. What's FEMA, Coach? And I said, what do you mean what's FEMA? And he goes, they're in my house. He said, they're going through my pantry. He said, they wanted to check for food. I wasn't going to let them in. This guy's a big man. He's 6'7", about 250. All right? And uh, he was newly married at the time, just had a baby. And he said to me, he says, they pulled back uh, the coat, and I could see the gun. They said, we're coming in one way or the other. And uh, he let them in, and they didn't go to the kitchen like he anticipated. They went to the pantry. And I had to explain to him what they were doing, and I told him, just sit tight. Don't resist. I said, you can always file a complaint afterwards. I'll help you with it if it's necessary. And I said, just let them go through and do their thing. They were doing a beta test there. It went on through the country over a decade ago about how to search people's homes for food. This is why Bob Griswold and I did that report the other day um, that how you hide your resources from the continuity of government forces. They're going to come seize them and redistribute them. You need to know just having the stuff is not enough. You need to hide a lot of the stuff, and that includes your defensive measures as well, too. Okay, uh, moving on. Checkpoint Charlies will be established. Uh, so there'll be perimeters here, not one perimeter, but multiple perimeters. And extreme measures will be employed to ensure containment. Uh, read between the lines on that one. Um, there will be multiple concentric zones imposed with various perimeters all designed to contain a pandemic. Under Executive Order 13603, all medical personnel will be conscripted. They will not be used to treat the public, but to treat the martial law enforcement personnel. You're on your own. As the crisis unfolds and becomes a staple of daily life, Containment camps, i.e. FEMA camps, will be established. Now, they can be anything. They could be a strip mall. Um, but they see on the street, uh, 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 like we see these Chinese people roaming around in the pictures, they're going to camps. Uh, it could be arenas. It would be whatever is in that area that can get you confined and away from the general population where you're only infecting people who appear to already be infected. And if you remember, there was an executive order that Obama did uh, before he left office, where if you coughed, that was enough to get you incarcerated, if you recall that. Um, military forces, including all nuclear facilities, will be on high alert because this is when America is most vulnerable to attack. I agree. This will make most people cringe. Extreme border control policies would immediately go into effect. Crossing the border will run the risk of a lethal event. In other words, you're not coming in. It doesn't matter if it's north, south. East or West, you're not coming into this country unopposed. It's people who want strict border control are going to get their way, but I don't think this is the way that we ever want to see it. We don't want to see loss of life for people trying to get a better life. But nonetheless, all people crossing the border are viewed as hostiles in this plan. And that makes sense. If you're going to shut the cities down, why would you leave the borders open? Well, don't ask Nancy Pelosi that. Her borders are always open. That's why she has no boundaries in her life. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, those are the nine things I can talk about. What I'm going to ask you to do, we're going to do an exercise here in uh, um, speculation, okay? I'm confident in this list, by the way, because of who I got it from and where I got it and specifically what I was told. And do I know some of the things on the 18? Generally, by inference, yeah. But I also think it's possible, the way that I wrote these, that you can infer what some of the classified elements are. So I'm going to ask you, just do the exercise. In the comment section, when this post and its finality, I'd like you to come back, and I'd like for you to list what you think you're going to see. And let's make it reasonable, okay? Because you can come on here and be a dumbass. I'm going to delete you. Okay, this is a serious exercise in speculation, not an exercise in being a jerk. And I have to say this because we are infiltrated by some trolls, from time to time, and I'm not tolerating it. This is too serious of a topic to put up with people who want to act like horses rear ends, and I'm not going to allow it. So I'm just telling you right now, you say something smart, Alec, you're out, and you won't be coming back to this site. Uh, to everybody else, uh, you may make a suggestion. I go, well, that's kind of silly on its face. That's fine. That's fine. I mean, some of what I say probably sounds silly to people. I get it, but I'm just saying I want serious discussion on this. Why am I doing this? Because I'm hoping we can raise the level of awareness by participation. 
and people will start to take steps to protect themselves and their family and their community. Let me tell you, right now is the day that you need to prepare to be a shut in. Right now, you need to act like it's going to happen. Now, it may never happen. You can have a plan in place and you never get to the final parts of the plan. And that can happen. But you better prepare like it's going to happen. Because if you want the model for what's coming, look at China, 13 cities. And now they're not even telling how many people are quarantined. I'm going to guess based on 23 million in seven cities, 13 cities probably has 40 million people quarantined. 40 million. This is the biggest quarantine in world history. So let's do a little speculating here, ladies and gentlemen. I do appreciate you coming on board today. Um, let me read a couple of things that are here that are coming in. Dave, please look at the event 201. I'm glad you said that. I'm writing about 201 this afternoon. That's right. I'm writing about event 201 this afternoon. Thank you for bringing that up uh, and for your uh, fisher of men. Uh, thank you very much for your kind donation. Um, ladies and gentlemen, yes, I will be talking about event 201. No question about it. Uh, there's other things I'm going to be bringing up too. And event 201 really puts this uh, issue into the realm of this is a bioweapon. And I, I'm sure Fisher of Men would agree with that based on what they're saying. Okay, I'm looking forward to your comments. I may even turn. My apologies for that last faux pas. We lost net and lost connections, and I got totally distracted. I just said, you know, what? I'm not going to wait for it to come back up. So here we are, got the booster on, we're good to go. Um, we need to look at something someone wrote in to me and, and, and I understand a little bit of the hysteria, but it was an hysterical question. Um, we talk about the numbers lining up to why we should be concerned. And I've been very careful to say that things burn out. In a region, you can have a 30 day burnout. And, and so we look at projections, we've talked about this with this virus. But there are some people overreacting. Should I send my kids to school? Should I do it? Listen, this hasn't even penetrated the United States in a big way as far as we know. And pretty sure I'm confident in saying it hasn't. So, no, you live your life until uh, someone says you shouldn't live your life that normally. But you don't want to watch the mainstream media. You need to watch sites that you trust. People that know a lot more about epidemiology and uh, virology than I do. But I'll report on what the more knowledgeable people say. So I think I'm a reliable source to go to from that respect. But to, to say that you're just going to drop out and board up the house, it's too soon to say that. We thought the same thing with Ebola. At least some people did. I didn't. I thought there'd be some Ebola spread, but I didn't see the big signs it was going to go crazy in America. I see potential from China for this going viral in America. I hope it doesn't, and I'm not guaranteeing that it will. I'm just saying you better get prepped because if not this time, maybe the next time. So don't go hysterical on us here, okay? Let's take the facts as they're reported and act accordingly. You need one of these, that's for sure, Patriot Flashlight. One of the things I've been reading about, the people that are um, prepared, they often forget about this and they forget about their meds. Let's talk about this, PatriotFlashlight.com. It's fantastic. It's thing any kinds of things you want, everything but cook lunch and dinner. This thing is fantastic. Check it out at patriotflashlight.com. Take 15% off with the coupon code Hodges15. But you need to check your preps. If this goes nowhere in America, and let's say it kills maybe 1,000 people, and hell, the flu kills over 35,000 a year. So let's say it kills 1,000, 5,000 people. That's awful for loss of life, but it's still not tragic in terms of uh, overall medical death rates for various organisms, diseases, flus, viruses, and so forth. So let's say it stays minor. We're able to contain it. Okay, good. We dodged one. Then you're ready for the next one, right? Right? If you think this stuff is natural, you're not paying attention. This is not natural. But it doesn't mean the unnatural is going to be successful. So stop the panic. Stop the hysteria. There will be a time if it's sweeping through American cities, you're going to have to say, I got to hunker down. This is it. We're not even close to that. Total overreaction. Please do not do that. Panic will make this situation worse. 
preparation will give you the confidence that you have a better than fighting chance of getting through this. Most people on the planet, according to the projections from this Lancet study, are going to survive this even if it goes bad. So increase your odds by prepping, not panicking. This is your admonition from the Common Sense Show. Please share this. Give us a thumbs up on the way out. And also, too, we would ask that you'd consider joining our Patreon. which I am not going to do anytime soon. Watch this, verse 6. For thus saith the Lord. Man, will he stop saying that? That just bothers me. Thus saith the Lord. I love it, man. For thus saith the Lord unto the king's house of Judah, thou art Gilead unto me. In other words, you're precious. And the head of Lebanon Yet surely I will make thee a wilderness and cities which are not inhabited. In other words, it's a place of decay. It's a place where people don't dwell. I can take you to any city today, and you can find places that are so full of darkness and sin that people don't even want to live there. They have to. But if the truth be known, if they could ever get out, they would leave. And it's happening more and more in our country as we're watching our cities turn into wreck and ruin and decay. Why? Because of the sin. He goes back and he says, this is the reason why, because you have rejected doing the right thing. You hear it all the time during campaigns. This city's bad and that city's bad. And, and if we could just go ahead and, and, and just put more money over here, and if we just put more programs and more outreach and all these different things, I don't hear one of them saying we need revival or preaching or going out and casting out devils and bringing forth the goodness of the good news. No, you don't hear that. More programs. And I understand societal programs, but they don't fix people. Amen. They're a Band-Aid. And right now we need a tourniquet in our nation. Watch verse 7. And I will prepare destroyers. Everybody say destroyers. They're already here. The destroyers of our society are already in our country. And I'm not just talking about an alien force of an army outside of the borders of this nation that now reside here. I am speaking of sin and demonic powers, demons, fallen spirits, imps, strong men and strongholds that are in our country. I prepared destroyers. Who did? God did. Who's saying this? Jeremiah is, and he's doing what? He's repeating what God told him to say. You go and tell those people that they better hear me, that they need to go back to righteousness because I have prepared destroyers for them. And I will prepare destroyers against thee, every one with his weapons, and they shall cut down thy choice cedars, and cast them into the fire. In other words, I'm going to use them to destroy your beautiful cities. I'm going to use them to destroy your beautiful treasures, which are your children, which are your inheritance. I have never seen in my life an attack upon young people as I do today. Whether it is the satanic attack of bringing children into witchcraft by musicians, sports figures, no matter where they are, sports figures denying God to the entire world, and our young children are idolizing them, or rock stars openly calling upon the devil. Never seen such an onslaught 
I thought it was bad in my day growing up, but it has gotten so much worse. What are these? These are destroyers that God said, I will bring to your nation when you don't do the right thing. These are destroyers that I prepared because you've allowed sin to come in like leaven and like cancer. And it's eating away at the very core, the very marrow of your bone, the very internal organs of your life. And the most precious gift we have is our children. Just recently, they've come out with a new doll. Some of you are aware of this. It's a transgender doll. It's supposed to be of a little girl that has a penis. Did you hear me? And see, say the word of the anatomy and somebody gets offended. But the reality is that's where our country and the world is, where we've taken God's creation and we've twisted it and we've churned it and we've made it into what we want it to be. While you're too busy fighting about politics and religious freedom, little children all across this nation and around the world will get a dress-up doll that's a freak. Did you hear me? Are you here today? And we're so worried about all of these other things that we have a silent group of people in the body that would raise hell over political issues, that would storm the building over a pastor's decision of the color of the carpet or whatever it may be or whatever goes on in these churches. But the reality is when something like this takes place, there's not an uproar, there's not an outcry. God told Jeremiah, tell them, to do the right thing. And yes, the Christian parents will be buying these. You better believe it. And I say Christian lightly because I doubt your salvation, honey. I doubt your salvation if you think that's acceptable. In Denver, Colorado, they've already agreed through the school board to allow transgender bathrooms. Anything goes as long as you got to go. These are destroyers. I'm not worried about ISIS. I'm not worried about my enemies overseas. I'm more concerned about the disease of sin in America and what's happening to our children and what's happening to every single institution in America. This is our hamburger hill. And we're being slaughtered. Well, don't you know, preacher, we're making progress? Not enough. Well, don't you know we're doing this and doing that? Not of real substance. Well, don't you know there's legislation and it's coming down the road and all we need is four more years. I don't have four more years to sit and wait for a man or a woman when I am to be busy about the Father's work now. He said, I'm going to send destroyers. I've already got them prepared. They're already destroying this nation. It's already happening. Can you handle me for just a couple more minutes? And I'll, I'll get out of your way. Verse 9. Then they shall answer because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord. Is the covenant Adam and Eve? Yes. It's the creative order of God. Not Adam and Steve. They've forsaken it. Should a bathroom be a safe place for a young girl? Yes. And for a young boy? Yes. In one school district, I believe it was in Pennsylvania, they've put multiple millions of dollars for open bathrooms and changing gym area. 
so everybody can just feel safe. Are you here? <laughs> and we wonder why. We wonder why there's a plague. We wonder why we're seeing the craziness in our society. Destroyers. And God told Jeremiah, don't you hold back, boy. You tell them like it is because I love them. And in love, warnings come. In love, God brings mercy and a message and says prophetically, repent of your sins and be born again. That's what he told them to do. They're forsaken the covenant of the Lord their God and worshiped other gods and he served them. That's what we've done. Verse 13 talks about the stuff, the shiny stuff. Verse 15 and 16 deals with the current king wanting to be like Solomon in stuff. If you translate it and study it out, that's what exactly what it means. But he didn't have the righteousness of his fathers. That's America. That's the American church. We want to look like our forefathers with the steeple and people and Bibles and hymns and all the entrapments of Christianity, but we're nothing like our fathers. We surely are not. Scan across any digital dial, whether it's internet or radio, and listen to what these guys are preaching, this tripe. Trends, not all, but many. We need a Holy Ghost revival in America. We're losing this nation. We've lost this nation. But we don't have to lose our families. We don't have to lose our neighbors. And we don't have to lose our churches. Finally, in verse 22, I'm closing only because of time, not because I'm tired or not because I want to because I've got more energy now than when I woke up this morning. Somebody say, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Verse 22 The wind, everybody say the ruach. The ruach, that is the breath of God. The wind shall eat up all thy pastors, and thy lovers shall go into captivity. Surely then thou shalt be ashamed and confounded for all thy wickedness. He said, I'm going to use adversity, I'm going to use opposition, and I'm going to cause your pastors to scatter and all of your lovers because they were not rooted and grounded. Jeremiah, you go tell them. You go tell them there's going to be a fall of shepherds. You go tell them that there is going to be a sifting that's going to take place. Go tell them. Could you imagine being Jeremiah and going to the bishop's conference or the pastor's conference, and being the, the keynote speaker, and the first thing you do is you take the microphone and you begin to look across the audience and say, God is about to judge every pastor in this room. I don't think he'd be allowed to come back. But judgment begins at the house of God. You say, Pastor, is there any hope? Yeah, there's always hope. His name is Jesus. There's hope that somebody watching me right now or listening to me on some media platform will get on their knees and cry out to God and say, God, change me. Fill me with the Holy Ghost and fire. Baptize me with the Holy Ghost and fire. Make me a firebrand and somebody that's bold, that's not afraid to tell my family or to tell my neighbor or my coworkers the truth about the Bible. Oh, but they're going to say this and say this and say that. And no, oh, they're going to be so offended. So what? I would rather offend somebody than stand before God watching them be cast into hell and my Savior say, why didn't you say something? It's coming. 
the day of the Lord is coming. The judgment for all believers is coming. If you're watching me right now and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you don't have to be a part of the judgment that brings you to damnation. You can be a part of the blessings of God. God loves you with an everlasting love, and all you have to do is ask Jesus into your heart and to forgive you of all your sins. You don't need to name them or number them. He knows them, but he's willing to forgive them if you'll just accept them as Lord and Savior. To the backslidden prodigal son or daughter, today is the day to make it right with God. He loves you with an everlasting love, and his arms are always wide open for you. But don't delay. Today's the day of salvation. All right, people, I just had to play a part of that. If you want to hear the whole sermon, you can go and put it, I mean, go and see it in the description box. Um, yep, I tell you, we are in the end, at the end, so much is going on. I just had this come on my mind. I'm going to probably say it to you, and then I'm going to close this video. I'm going to go over here to Psalms 24. <clears throat> Psalms 24, one of my favorite Psalms. Uh, back in, I still love it so much when he's talking about um, the King of Glory, the King of Glory, a Psalm of David. The earth is the Lord's and all is fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend unto the hill of the Lord, and who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, not sworn deceitfully. Nothing but idols today. Nothing but idols. Idols all around in our home, our children, our husbands, our, uh, your car, your land. Your, you know, I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that this guy, the basketball player guy, uh, he didn't think he would be dying here now at 41 years old. We don't know when our time is. We don't know when that appointed time is with our master. We don't know, people. We need to be ready. We need to get ready. As Benjamin Faircloth just said, you need to get ready. It's time to get ready. Be ready. Stay ready. Stay ready, okay? Uh, it ain't time to be playing around with Yah, playing around with God, playing around with him, people. It's time to know that the times, the signs are all showing. I didn't get to pull up this other link today about... Uh, how uh, in Africa, the uh, locusts are taken over. The locusts are taken over. Uh, Mary uh, Greeley had a, a, a clipping, and I wanted to show it, but I must be mixed it up in my notes somewhere. But I will put it in the description box. The, uh, these, uh, <clears throat> these locusts are taken over in Kenya, taken over in Africa. Swarms and swarms of them at a time, people. So you know famine is coming, famine is coming, famine is coming. Pestilence, famine, earthquakes, mighty, mighty shaking is coming, as you've heard many of God's people, uh, prophets and prophecies talk about. It's coming, people. They're going to be coming in our doors, knocking on our doors, as you heard uh, Dave Hodges just talk about. Coming in, looking at your food, taking your water. I dreamed it three times. Came in and pulled out all the liquids in the house, all the food in the house. Told you if you wanted water and food, come to FEMA camp. Follow me. It's coming. The testing time is coming. Wake up, wake up. So it says here, uh, uh, what I just said, you know, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol? Not sworn deceitfully. We're going to have a testing time like never before. Are you going to choose Babylon? Are you going to choose uh, 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 the devil? Are you going to choose uh, the, the Antichrist system? Are you going to choose Molech? Uh, are you going to choose uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, Catholicism, Atheism, uh, 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 all these things, uh, uh, Scientology, Astrology, Islam? Are you going to choose these things, people, over the almighty God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? My God, almighty our God here of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, are you going to choose man over these people? Are you going to choose a, 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 a king over these people? The only earth, only king you need to be choosing is Yeshua HaMashiach. Yehushua HaMashiach, okay? You can say his name in whatever way you want, but his his name, his Israel name, Yehushua HaMashiach, are you going to choose him? Are you going to choose uh, Rome? Are you going to choose the Catholics? Are you going to choose these people who are false prophets and false gods people we need to know who we're going to choose who we're going to stand for today 
He shall receive blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, Shalah. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift up you everlasting doors, hallelujah, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the king of glory, shalom, hallelujah, hallelujah. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video now. We're going to go back over here to Maranatha, the Lord is coming and close out. And I will put some other links in the description box for time's sake. I didn't have time to go over Latter Rain 333 and some other news things. But I will put them in the description box, all the news reports. Uh, but here, let's go and hear the faith that works. The faith that works. Okay, I'm going to mute it out. <clears throat> February 19, the faith that works. The end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. 1 Peter 4, 7. Do you believe that the end of all things is at hand? That the scenes of this earth's history are fast closing? If so, show your faith by your works. A man will show all the faith he has. Some think they have a good degree of faith, when if they had any, it is dead, for it is not sustained by works. Faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Few have that genuine faith which works by love and purifies the soul. But all who are accounted worthy of everlasting life must obtain a moral fitness for the same. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. This is the work before you. You must experience a death to self, and must live unto God. If ye then be, in, be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Self is not to be consulted. Pride, self-love, selfishness, avarice, covetousness, love of the world, hatred, suspicion, jealousy, Evil surmisings must all be subdued and sacrificed forever. When Christ shall appear, it will not be to correct these evils and then give a moral fitness for his coming. This preparation must all be made before he comes. It should be a subject of thought, of study, and earnest inquiry. What shall we do to be saved? What shall be our conduct that we may show ourselves approved of God? When tempted to murmur, censure, and indulge in fretfulness, wounding those around you, and in so doing, wounding your own soul, oh, let the deep, earnest, anxious inquiry come from your soul. Shall I stand without fault before the throne of God? Only the faultless will be there. None will be translated to heaven while their hearts are filled with the rubbish of earth. Every defect in the moral character must first be remedied, every stain removed by the cleansing blood of Christ, and all the unlovely, unlovable traits of character overcome. Okay, people, uh, I'm going to go. Uh, wow, I just, I can't believe all the things going on. It's just so much happening, 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 happening. Death is all around us, people. We have to be ready at any moment you don't know when your final moment is on this earth you don't know you don't know so you need to be ready i just want to thank everybody for all the offerings to help the homeless the orphans the widows and those in need in mission fields may yeshua hamashiach uh bless each and every one of you uh i just ask that you send offerings to marner.campbell at gmail.com at paypal uh, mail and donations to fill my cup ministries post office box 414 canyon city colorado 81215 and i really just want to thank each and every one of you for all your prayers all your emails uh thank you for the prayers sometimes i send emails out to people to pray for a certain situation and god has answered these prayers this week 
Uh, my family member has moved from one place to another. Uh, all the people was, just, was traveling abroad in Thailand, got home safely. So I really thank you for all the prayers. Uh, sometime I sent out little prayers, uh, much prayer, much power. So we have to pray for one another. So it's time to be praying and fasting more now than ever, more now than ever, people. Giving God some time in the morning, giving some, him some time in the night. I'm always giving him time in the evening and in the night, uh, uh, talking to him, praying with him, talking to him, praying with him. Father, can this happen? Can that happen? Can you help me? Uh, whatever it may be, you need to have some personal time with the Father uh, in your prayer closet or whatever you can pray. It's time to go to him now. Father, I thank you so much for your people watching today. We thank you so much for your love for us, your care for us, your, uh, your absolutely uh, counsel for us. We need instruction. We need protection. We need direction right now, Father. Uh, we know a lot of things are happening. And we just need you to help us make the right decision, make the right decision. So we're asking you to help us choose life and death, not death. Choose life and not death today. Choose life and not death today. Hell is a, rivet, a living place. Hell is a real place. We need to know who we're going to serve, who we're going to follow. Are we going to follow the serpent, the devil? Are we going to follow you, Father, who made that everlasting opportunity for us to have salvation everlasting life you made it for us you came down and dwelt among men and made it for us made this happen we ask that you help us to choose you hallelujah choose you father so we ask that you be with all the names in the prayer box every man woman boy girl we lift these prayer box up to you again today every name on a piece of paper we give it to you today all the prayer requests been coming in we ask that you answer they answer the prayers hear our supplications father uh whether it be spiritual mentally physically we ask that you help us father to know you are the healing god you are the only one can save us hallelujah so we thank you father for your love your mercy your care. Uh, we just bind Satan and all his evil angels below beyond beneath, mentioned and unmentioned, known and unknown. We bind all evil spirits on assignment against us in every way. We ask for your Holy Spirit to fall on your people all over the world, all over, Father, your remnant, your elect, Father. Help us, help us, help us. Help us to be, uh, uh, to stand strong right now. Not we weak, not be weak, not be weak, Father. Help us to stand strong right now. And we thank you so much, Father, for your power and your glory and we ask all these blessings in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach so I'm going to go now and you guys have a wonderful rest of your Sunday I'll be back with another video as soon as I can I will put some links in the description box as I always do uh, please go and look in the description box okay if you ever see me say D box D period box it's talking about the description box okay so you guys have a blessed uh, uh, Sunday and I'll see you guys on another video I love you guys so much Shalom Shalom I love you guys so much Shalom Shalom